right. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Welcome in, everyone. My name is Eve Robinson. I'm a ZBrush trainer here at Maxon, and we do ZBrush for fun, and we have a lot of good times. We create weird stuff, and that's what we do here. So welcome in. Welcome in. What's going on, everybody? Through the music, design with Minish. How you guys doing? Mohammed, welcome in. Eternal Games, Nordy Bite. Welcome in. What's going on? How's everyone doing? Hopefully everyone's been having a good time. I know I've been absent uh, because I've been, uh, I went over to Europe, as some of you might know. I was able to uh, go over to Germany and then parts of the UK and showcasing ZBrush in those areas as well as getting to meet some really amazing top artists. So it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've missed streaming, but I've been traveling, so that's what's going on. But uh, yes, I'm, I'm here, so we're going to continue going forward. We are also getting ready for Monster Palooza very, very soon. Um, so if you are in the Pasadena, LA area, you should definitely stop by. What's up, Chuck? How you guys doing? Uh, don't mind my voice. Um, if it sounds a little crackly from time to time, I've been, I've been talking a lot for like two, three weeks straight. So my voice might sound a little raspy. So I got tea, and then I got my coffee, so then soothe my voice have some coffee <laughs> that's where we're at today also too let's get some music going on here um i try to make sure, sure the music is there for everyone but um it's more for my mental stability too all right so today so today what we're gonna do i've like done more work on this guy than than i thought and then i lost that file so i'm actually going to be here to doing more <laughs> tea and coffee is the ultimate combo you're absolutely right 100 percent. so so I thought today we would explore, instead of sitting here and like get, like there's no point in this character being a uh, game ready, but I am trying to keep this character clean enough to eventually throw um, into a texture program. So I eventually do want to do uh, some more, some some different texturing and then take it through the pipeline. I've been doing a lot of my workflow has been ZBrush into Substance Painter into Cinema 4D Redshift. It's been a lot of my workflow lately and I'm really enjoying that process. So. Um, obviously here we're going over a lot of ZBrush stuff, so I want to actually come through and eventually get them for being 3D printed at some point. So we're going to try to do some, some exploration. And of course too, please, yeah, ask all your questions and so forth, but let's actually get back some of the work that I've lost here. So let's, I'm going to sew this guy out. In fact, this is, like I said, this is where we've been with him. And my goal with him is actually to make him just a really awesome statue. So let's actually focus here, and then I'm going to sculpt on his wing, refine his wings a little bit. So a lot of what you're going to be seeing today is actually more of like refinements, and then of course any questions you guys have. Hey, what's up, Matthew? How you guys doing? What's up, Jeff? Yeah. All right, so let's do our clay buildup brush, so BCB, and then I'm going to go ahead and use the Alpha 18. I love this Alpha because it's really good for um muscles and it's also really good for like just kind of getting some some nice big shapes thrown in cleaned up without it being super harsh and then of course too let's make sure back face mask is turned on just before we just shred all of our geometry here so let's go up the brush let's ping this over here and then let's go auto masking and back face mask so how is everyone doing? What's what's been going on with a lot of with a lot of you? Any fun projects? Any cool TV shows? Movies? I'm gonna go see. I'm gonna take my son to go see Guardians soon. So I'm excited about that. No spoilers, but if you've seen Guardians three, let me know if you guys like it. I'm trying to think, what did I watch recently? I've watched some stuff recently. That's like been a lot of fun. I've also been into, uh, I don't know if you guys know Patrick 4D. He's one of our newer, he's one of our newer uh, ZBrush Live artists. And this dude has been making me get into food. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I love it. I'm super, I'm super for it. Uh, he's an awesome artist. If you don't know who he is, you got to check him out too. But he's, he's one of our newest ones and is just solid, solid artist. Rewatching Fringe series. Ooh, I have not seen that. That's something I may have to check out then. You're working on a stylized Jack Sparrow. Heck yeah. Dude, I actually, that's what it was. I was actually watching uh, Dead Man's Chest the other day. I forgot how long that movie was, but just had an itch to watch it. And here we are. 
All right, let's go back to clay buildup. Going to smooth some of this in. So for as far as poses go for this guy, my thought process is actually to keep it simple. And we're going to actually just do something kind of loose. We don't need to go super crazy. But I thought what might be interesting is having him kind of look down. And then on the floor will be his dice. That was a thought that I had this morning. So we might go that route. Okay, so I opened up the light box because we're going to go under brush. So I want to smooth this, the shapes of this down. And if you ever run into this issue where you're running with multiple uh, subdivisions and you want to smooth something, but you don't want to constantly step down or step up, we do have a smooth, stronger brush that lives right up here in the light box. And now this will help me be a little bit more destructive on the higher subdivision levels. So this is definitely a way you can go about doing that. My plan is to blend this back in just a little bit. And then we're going to take the damn standard. And then let's actually take, let's go up to stroke, lazy mouse. I'm going to turn, nope, we're just going to turn this up a little bit so we get a nice tail. Start that again. Damn standard, lazy mouse, lazy radius. So we get a nice tail and we'll clean this up. Hey, what's up, Leonard? How you doing? Can I share a screenshot of my work in progress if you have time? I don't think we allow links here, but what you can do is I do have a Discord. Um, you could throw it in my Discord, and then I can definitely take a look at it. Yeah. Here, let me let me sign into that real real quickly. But yeah, absolutely. That's actually I I have so there's two discords. You could do the Zebras Discord, which is always a great spot for you to go in and connect with all the things directly related to ZBrush. But if you want to uh, follow me, you can um, just IR sculpts. I can actually send in a, a link to that and then you could share it in there. You could tag me and then I'll take a look at it as well. So um, that's definitely a way to get eyes on it. If you want to just get my eyes on it, just throw it in my discord and then just tag me. It's the, it's the best, it's the best way to get me to look at something. <laughs> Anybody can tag me. I love looking at artwork by the way. So if you guys want, you can always tag. And then when I get a second, I'll pop in, even if it's on like Twitter or IG, because I just love looking at art. Absolutely, Chase. Third Chan. Working on a Spider Gwen because of the new movie that's coming up this weekend. You're right, it's coming up on Friday. I was just talking about that movie because I was explaining to, uh, I was explaining to some of my colleagues and friends what I loved about Into the Spider-Verse was the fact that if you go back and watch the first one, you will see the frame rate of Miles Morales is like on the odd frames and everyone else is on the even. Where everyone, So he's like out of sync throughout the whole film. And then all of a sudden, um, when he becomes Spider-Man, he's synced back up with with it so it's a, such a small little fun detail that you're like man what a clever way to approach that so yeah uh work is the do 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 that damn standard i never <laughs> i didn't know uh why but i'm on a everyone hates chris kick oh interesting nice uh, let's see here uh delete history uh history delete automatic when working in a solution you mean uh, decide with that uh, a minute you mean that like you're working and then all of a sudden it it de it deletes or when you close the program and open it back up it's deleted i want to make sure i understand what you're asking okay I'll step back up just a little bit. I did step down just a teeny, teeny bit, but we're going to go back to stroke. I'm really going to crank this radius up, and I just want like a light little pinch. I'm going to redraw this. Now, here's a cool thing. So here's a little cool trick I'm going to show you. So like everybody kind of knows of this one where like you do like a line like this, and then you press one a bunch of times, and that repeats that action, right? Well, what you could also do too, which is super awesome, 
is if you press three and then come through, hit some re uh, strokes, hit three again, and then by pressing two, you'll repeat that those actions over and over and over again. So if you wanna do multiple action recordings, before you do anything, press three and then come through and let's say like the stroke right here, I'm gonna come in, lazy mouse for the win, I'm gonna switch position, rotate, I'm gonna come through like this, and then I'm gonna do this one more time. So I'm gonna come through, start pinching this area right here, come through this way, right? Let go three, then hit two a bunch of times. Let it redraw on its own. So those are a really fun way to go about doing any type of recording action that you would want to do to get more of that detail in line. And then here, real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and refine this area a bit. And step this down, and I'm going to turn on back face mask just to do a light, kind of a light softening of these areas right here because that pinched through just a little bit just like that step back up just doing a light smooth there we go so getting getting that shape that we want oh yeah you're absolutely welcome that's actually here's the funny part so when pressing three sometimes you'll get this error message right so if I come on up, boop, boop, doop, 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 doop. hold on one second. No, nope, let's see here. Hold on. Where did I have it? Give me a second. I know in my brain where it's at, so I could probably tell you where it's at when I, when I come through. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys something. Now I need to do, there it is. Okay, so under stroke inventory, you see here, there is a record and then the stroke count. And here's the thing. So when you hit record by hitting three, that turns this on. And I know some of you have ran into this area where all of a sudden you'll have this thing that's maxed out and you get this error message that says, hey, you've exceeded the amount of strokes for this. Do you want to continue? Turn off record. And everyone's like, what is happening? That's what it is. When you accidentally hit three, and I can tell you how you're doing it because like I do it all the time by hitting W. When you accidentally hit three, it sets this up, but that's what that purpose is for. So three just turns it off again. So that's also a way to fix that, uh, that error message if that pops up at any point in time. Yep, exactly. The framework went with the storyline of Miles Miles Goods. Yeah, it was so cool. I loved it. Working on an arcane character of my own design. John, yes, that is awesome. Uh, yep, notice the difference. Yeah, super cool. I want to see them do more of that in the second one, so I can't wait. Do, 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 do. Did you know that they used an open source coloring program for the color scheme in the first Spider-Verse movie? No, I did not know that. Um... What I can, like, funny story about that is that I was on LinkedIn and I was actually following uh, Into the Spider-Verse thinking it was fan art, thinking it was just, like, fan-made stuff. I don't know why. Um, it didn't, like, it didn't seem to be tied to anything at the time when I was looking at it. Um, so then I was like, oh, this is really cool. I'm glad somebody's doing this thing. And... Like, oh, this is a cool idea, right? And <laughs> and then the trailer came out, and I felt like an idiot. I was like, oh my gosh, this is actually a, this is actually a movie. And so I was like, I felt like I was obligated to go watch it, and I'm so glad I did. It is by far one of my most favorite Spider-Man movies of all time. I love that movie a lot. All right, we're just going to go ahead. We're just refining today and hanging out and having a good time, but please feel free if you guys have questions. Um, do we get a on the history recall? Did we get anything else on that? Okay, no. Um, do 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 do. I would say going back to the history automatic, uh, history delete automatic when working. Um, what I would say is if you are having things that are, it's like it's deleting on accident. Um, there's two two things that could be happening that maybe you're not aware of. First thing would be the fact that when you have a subtool. History is subtool dependent. So if you have a subtool 
and then all of a sudden you maybe duplicate that subtool and then you look up and the history is gone that is one of the solutions that will happen um, if you're not saving projects but you're saving ztls and you close zbrush down and you go to open it back up um, the history will be gone because projects are the only uh they're the only ones that could save history on that as far as just like randomly deleting i have not run into that but if you have an example that you can share like via video or something like it's something that you can repeat i definitely recommend you throw it to the support team because then we could take a look at that replicate the issue and then fix it so if there if you are running into solutions i'm sorry you when you are running into uh problems if you can if you can like highlight it and send it to us then that helps us which is what supports their that's what support is there for um kind of kind of perks of, of being a software you've paid for is the fact that there's a support team you can reach out to so i would say definitely feel more encouraged to reach out to us so we can spotlight those problems quickly but again if there's something you can share with us that's going to help us get um, some eyes on it Probably not the answer you wanted, sorry, but that's that's definitely the uh, that is definitely the best approach for that. Okay. Here trying to get some of this refinement going on. There we go. Get some of these pores activated. Really zooming in today. Hey, what's up? How you guys doing? Let's see. Um do 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 do. Uh, can I ask how you would add limbs? How would you start? How how would you start the project, or how would you start it? Um, you know, it's actually it's actually really really simple. Um, I love starting projects. Actually, I feel like the majority of my live streams as of late has been me starting projects and doing just that. But I'll show you uh, a couple of the approaches you could take for adding limbs to something. No problem. The, the biggest trick when doing anything sculptural is, especially in the early stages, don't overthink the process. Like, we have this saying uh, I learned when I was studying under Shane Olson, which was the valley of the suck. Um, when you are sculpting and you're starting out, and I get this, this is easier said than done, but trust me, it happens to all of us. Um, the thing is, is that when you're in, when you're first starting out, everything is terrible. Like everything is just in the valley of the suck. Like the whole block out process looks like a total mess, especially when you're starting from scratch because there's so much anatomy and proportions and volumes we got to pay attention to. And what makes it unique, uh, what makes the human body unique even for character work is that everything is measured off itself. So when you're, when you're starting the block out process, don't be afraid to just sit there and get everything on the canvas that you need, no matter how terrible it looks, because you don't want to move into detailing anyway until there's enough refinement. So, or I'm sorry, you don't want to move into any detailing until there's enough information to even begin the refinement process. So even here, I would consider I'm into the secondary. I'm, I'm not even in tertiary at this point. This is just secondary stuff. Getting Still getting big fat pads in softening things up making things look good but the main blackout phase that for there you just kind of you know like you just need to kind of not worry too much about you know how pristine something looks but rather just like is everything there is all the information there for you and if it is then you can start moving on so for example what i mean by that let's actually take one of my favorite little characters so I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick. And then just for funsies, let's actually turn all this color back on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. I actually stepped him up a little too far. And let's actually kick back here to Skin Shade 4. I'm just going to go ahead and just Shift S stamp him in there. And then now we're going to go ahead. Actually, let's do that one more time. We're going to just have him here, Shift S stamp him. Let's actually switch. And I'm just going to pull out a basic sphere just so we have. And then, of course, we're going to hit T, make poly mesh 3D. Okay, cool. We got a sphere. This is where most people are going to be starting, right? Although, mind you, you can start if you are still getting used to 
anatomy and you want to like have a nice starting spot if you're doing like let's say a bust you go to project and you actually come in here to head planes we have male and female head planes but let's say you want to start with a crazy character so let's actually do let's take a look at this guy right here so we're gonna take a look at bokoblins for example i've sculpted these guys these guys are so much fun i highly encourage sculpting fun like weird creatures especially when you're learning anatomy for the first time there's enough information here that you know you you should when you're studying anatomy making a human is probably the the hardest thing you can do because humans are very specific and everyone on the planet knows what a human looks like so when it's wrong it's wrong but don't be discouraged by that because if you take something that's close enough and you start playing with it you know, try sculpting a human, then try sculpting something that is human-ish. And then you'll start noticing and you'll get a little bit more comfortable a little quicker. But notice that, like, all the proportions will matter. So taking a character like this guy, for example. How I would start something like this Vokoblin. With this sphere shape here, the biggest thing to do, you can go one of two ways. You could do the blockout method or the dynamesh method. Either way, I'm going to take the move brush here. Just going to turn on symmetry. Okay, and I always start with a rib cage. Always. I'll smooth this down, work really, really low. So let's say, like, let's, I'm going to use Dynamesh at resolution 40. And here I'm going to start with the rib cage itself. So I know what a rib cage looks like, as I've sculpted quite a few of them. But use reference if you have not. So I'm going to have something like this. Let's actually turn on a bit of a better. Thing. So I'm going to start with something like this. The reason why I start with the rib cage is because everything kind of works its way off from that. So if I were to do a blockout method, for example, I would go ahead and grab just a basic primitive shape. Let's say something like the cylinder. I'm going to look at the top of this, and then I'm going to go ahead and maybe bring in the neck, right? And I know necks are forward facing. There's, of course, a little bit of a, a decent shape in there, but let's just say I have something like this guy right there. Okay, so this is my, my neck process. Now I want to go ahead and add the limbs. Well, I know that, and this again, looking at the character itself, you got shoulders, then you have arms. Look at the shoulders or deltoid areas as like balls, right? So I can actually just kind of put this, I could put down some spheres here and just kind of get this situated, have them set back a little bit. Again, always checking reference. But then here, you know, I know the arms are more cylindrical. So I'll expand this out a little bit. Maybe stick this in here. Okay, if you want to scale something up like this, you can use local symmetry. If you're in 2022, local symmetry, there's no dynamic. But you could do uh, a scale up or you can do an inflate scale by pressing control and inflating that, that nice little center spot. So I'll give you a little bit of an inflate. So you could just do this area here. And then, of course, control drag, get this blocked out here. Maybe start manipulating this a little bit. I like to inflate this section. So I just start moving it up. Now, of course, I'm doing this relatively fast because I've done this a bunch of times, right? But at the end of the day, you want to start from a starting spot. And you want to start, in my opinion, from the rib cage. Now, notice that this rib cage is not at all the right proportion. That's okay. I'm going to turn off local sim. It's fine. I'm not worried about the rib cage here. But let's say I wanted to do a dynamesh approach to this. Well, I would actually just go ahead and mask this section off here. Invert that with the gizmo. We can reset this. Drag this out a little bit. Kind of get just a little bit rebuilt. And now start getting some of the areas that would be like the waist here. Now, this is a pretty bad spot here. So I need to fix this. So I'm just utilizing the move. Maybe I cut it out too much. So I'll take the knife curve. I'll cut that, rebuild this section here. And I'm just kind of playing with the shapes a little bit. Maybe I'll drag this section out here. Okay, so I've lost symmetry. So let's actually do this. I backed it up, but we'll do a modified topology, mirror and weld. Okay, now I'm going to drag this down because I need to have the buttocks region and I also need to have the growing region here so and this is where you can start deciding is this a male is this a female character 
again, I'm not too concerned about whether or not things are correct. And this is a this is a thing that like even I've done early on. I've hung up on too many of the little details in the beginning. You just need enough information. So here I know that we have a spinal column back here. So I can just take this, kind of quickly do a little bit of a line. Again, you're just adding on top of it. Same thing with the legs here, okay? If I wanted to just grab a spot here, just drag this portion out, maybe set this forward a little bit. This is obviously, let's move this up a bit. Again, and rebuild. And the idea here, again, is that you're just kind of working it through. So, and then it's rinse and repeat until you get something. And then you check it to the reference. And then eventually you'll have full characters like this. What's up, Patrick? Patrick Foley. Patrick Foley's Patrick 4D, by the way, guys. Guys, follow that man. Follow him. Hey, what's going on? So, yeah. The hardest thing for beginners in ZBrush is not seeing results instantly. If you are patient with the project and time, everything will be will fall into place. Absolutely. No, 100%. And this is something that I love that we have these conversations about. Because the thing is, is that sculpting, sculpting for a lot of people has, has, has felt like intimidating and tedious. And there's no need for, the, for, there's no need for that really. I'll, like, I'll call it out for what it is. There's, it makes sense because when we don't know, we don't know. And there's a lot of fear in that. But if you live with the idea that it's okay to fail, it's okay to try, it's okay to just come through and start and start, you know, experimenting when when you're learning by doing which is a lot of sculpting like we, we could sit there all day and watch tutorials on how to sculpt but if you're not going to get your hands in there then you're not going to fail to learn and that's that's the process is that you are actually every time you you do something and it's and it's not right you learn from that experience and as long as you learn from that experience over time you'll start being like okay cool this is what I wanted to do. This makes the most sense, right? So like that Bokoblin character, of course, I just blocked out a head, right? I mean, I blocked out a body, but now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to like bring this head in. And so again, we just start with this process. We don't do anything too, too crazy. Looking at my reference, being like, okay, it's kind of a, kind of a weird shaped head here. That's all right. Again, I'm not worried about too much of the main shapes but I want the ears. So I'll do something like this where like, okay, a little trick for the ears. We could just do this thing where we drag this out here, maybe maybe squish this, you know, maybe come in here, add this guy and then like expand and then use the move tool, right? You could do something like this and start getting the ears out. You could do that, nothing wrong with that. There is a new tool and new, I mean, it's been here a while. <laughs> But it is called, where are we at? Where are we at? Hold on. Ba, 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 ba. It is called the Curve Quad Fill Brush. This brush is amazing. Boop. Look at this. Boop. This thing is, this thing is freaking awesome. Just with the size of the curve, manipulate this shape a little bit, add this in here. Boom. Awesome. Tap that. We have that information now. Pardon me. So now I can come through here. Even with this guy, I can come up with the bend curve. Add a couple points. That's too many points. Slow your rolling in. Come through. Start bending in some shapes. These are huge ears. That's okay. The idea here is that I'm just trying to figure this space out. I'll go ahead and say accept. That's fine. I could scale this down just a little bit. Yeah, let's scale that down just a little bit. That's fine. We're just gonna put the shape here. I know he has he's he's uh of he has like kind of pig anatomy to him because Ganondorf and all that good stuff. So let's go back to our B I T primitives and let's actually get a cylinder. Let's drag out. Where are you going? Boom! Anyway, so that's blocking out. <laughs> yep, Zebra's just uh, just featured me. 
But yeah, so that that's the thing. So you're going through, you're playing with that stuff, and you're constantly working it. And even uh, even all of us, we end up breaking all of our stuff. So do not worry, do not fear. It is all here. I don't know why I said that the way I said that. <laughs> what happened? Hey, what's up, Fred? How you doing? Uh, let's see here. Um, where is my Watto character? Hold on one second. Hold on. I need to. I need to search for this real fast. Here it is. Oh, there it is. Great, beautiful. Double click that. I hope you're doing well. Can I please DM you on Instagram to get your feedback on my personal project? Actually, you know what you could do is you can actually let's see if I still have it here. Boom. You can actually send it to my Discord and you can you can check you can send it to me there and then yes, absolutely, I will check it out. I'm always at war with Z Modeler because it's just not Maya. That's okay, Chase. That's okay. So what I what I would say is it's just understanding how Z Modeler works. I, my, it works differently than Maya on purpose. It's a new approach and it's a more, it's, it's, well, here, I'll tell you what. I'll give you all of the golden nuggets and gooses and geeses and the secret sauce. The secret sauce to the main project. Look at this head, by the way. Speaking of blockouts, here was my Watto blockout for the head. So, just so you know. But, um, okay, so let's let's do something let's do something on purpose. <laughs> let's actually take a look at Z Modeler and what that can actually what that could actually do. So again, when you think of so what I classify as box modeling um, or traditional hard surface sculpting or sorry hard surface modeling, it's I do I do come from Maya and SolidWorks and Fusion 360 and Mastercam and Vellum. I come from an aerospace background. So I've seen a lot of different ways that 3D model programs operate. And why I tend to fall headly, Matt, you know, head over heels for Z Modeler is the thing that it's not, and it's not the same. And that's what I appreciate about it. So for example, let's just start creating like a simple base that maybe we can elaborate on a little bit, right? So I have my basic cylinder here. A trick that I like to tell everybody is if you go under geometry and you go under edge loop and delete loops, that's gonna delete all of the loops that actually don't matter to the shape and design. So with a click of a button, even if I have, let's say, a couple things up here, so insert, I'm getting ahead of myself, but don't worry. So I have all these, as soon as I hit delete loop, it deletes the things that it doesn't actually need, which is important to me. So now let's take a look at the functionality of Z Modeler. So the one thing that Z Modeler can't do is end gons, and that's important to know when you're thinking about when you're thinking about how to approach Z Modeler, which is what a lot of other softwares has allowed you to do for a long time. However, its strengths lies in the ability to just quickly manipulate and utilize features like QMesh to really get you the shapes that you want. And that combined with the gizmo really brings it together. So again, so let's take a look at some stuff. So first things first, I want to create a, just like a simple base. So I'm going to mask off this area and I'm just going to use the gizmo to bring this down, right? Great, perfect. Now from here, if I hover over a point, a edge or a face, the space bar is your best friend with the modeler because all of these actions live at the same time. The biggest thing that I've had with other applications is constantly having to hit W, E, R, blah, 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 blah. I don't have to do that here. It's all of, I don't have to go into vertex points. I don't have to go into edge faces. I can literally manipulate all of them at once, which is why I favor it. So here, my space bar being my best friend, if I want to actually create, you know, some points here, so I can go ahead and either A, just hover over this Q mesh and say, yeah, I want to affect this pace here. And if I just tap one time, it repeats that action. And that works on anything. Same thing with edges. If I do an edge loop here and then I tap one time, it repeats that action for me. So there's a lot of just quick actions to work. But I can also do temporary polygroup selections, which is what Z Modeler is really focusing on. So if I want to do these two points here and extrude these, even with Q mesh and polygroup all, which is a vast favorite. So again, looking at this menu, going back as I kind of jumped ahead, 
is that when I hit the space bar, looking at these menus as an order of operation. So don't let this menu kind of freak you out. More of look at it like, okay, I'm pressing hold on the space bar. At the very top, what's the action I want to do? Why do I want to do that action? So here, do I want to extrude? Do I want to have a Q mesh? Do I want to mask something? Do I want to scale it? Do I want to spherize it? Do I want to slice it? Notice that every time I click a new menu, the, the menus underneath this menu are altering to fit the needs of the tool. And that's where this one brush is hard surface and ZBrush. It literally is like a program within a program. So at this point, I can say, look, I want to Q-mesh this. Now my target, do I want to affect only one polygon? Do I want to affect all front-facing polygons? Do I want to affect just everything? Those are options that you could choose. Definitely play around with this. And then at the bottom are just, these are just refining that action. So nine times out of 10, I say, don't even pay attention to these ones. Just, I want to Q-mesh this one and I want to do that. So then I can drag these out together. Now the power of Q-mesh is imagine I did this a few times and now I need this one and this one to snap to this edge. But in other programs, if I'm doing like extrude and I say extrude all that poly group. So again, spacebar extrude all poly group. I come up, it's just going to bypass that, right? There's not going to connect it. So I'm just literally extruding that out. Same thing with pushing that in. It's just extruding that base in. With Q mesh, especially when I have multiple edge loops, so I'm going to hover over this face. I'm going to do insert multiple edge loops and just drag out a couple, right? Even at this point, with Q mesh, I can actually have it come in and it snaps to the nearest edge. So that's allowing me to connect that. And that's a watertight connection. And I can do this multiple times. So I can say, yep, I want that action there and that action there. And I can start building that off of. I can even come in and push this in and delete that section, have that section snap into that, that face. So I can take these points and start dragging this out. And if I tap Alt while I'm doing the action, I can switch poly groups. So now quickly I can start doing multiple actions and affecting this. And this is what's gonna allow me to build with it, right? So now let's do something again on purpose here. So let's say, again, I wanna have just like a simple base, something I can utilize for you know, my D&D &D stuff or whatever project or base I'm working on. So I can combine these actions again with the, with the um, gizmo. But let's say I don't want to. We're just going to use just going to use the modeler. So I'm going to add a couple edge loops here, and then I'm going to add a couple edge loops here. And now over this face, because I'm extruding edge loops, I can just Alt Tap Delete and get some of these looking like this. Maybe add in a couple. Or let's say I want this to be round. So now I'm going to hover over this edge loop, press and hold the space bar, say Insert multiple edge loops, but with an interactive elevation. So now I can start bringing this up and I can even bevel this up a little bit. So now I can start getting maybe like a turbine or I can get, again, just something that has like a nice, nice little bevel to it. And if I, if I go left to right, it actually pushes it in. If I go up and down, it gives me multiple edge loops. So these are ways in which you could start manipulating the shape. I can even go this direction, say, yep, that's perfect. That's what I want. And again, I could just tap and repeat that action if I choose to. So this is where it's a little bit different of a program for sure. But if you really think about like the possibilities of once you get comfortable with this, it's just a different way of doing it, but you're allowed to create custom shapes quickly. So how do you delete faces and fill holes? Great question. Okay, so if let's say here, I want to delete these two faces. Then I hover over this edge. I'm sorry, hover over the face, press and hold space bar, delete. And then I can delete with a tap. Those are deleted. Now, if I wanted to fill these areas up again, so thinking about like the easiest way to fill this, I can actually come here and say here on this edge, I can actually come through and bridge and I can bridge this edge and this edge together. I can bridge this edge and this edge together. And it bridges those two things together. So if I have a spot where I'm coming through and let's say, let's go ahead and just Q mesh this. I'm gonna bring this up. Wee, there we go. Tap this, make this a little bit different. 
And then let's say this hole got deleted or I deleted it on purpose or I'm retopologizing. Again, I can come through and just do my bridge and then I can do that aspect here. And then of course rotate around to that aspect there and rebuild that. So anytime you have something that is actually like when you're retoppling, you just want to connect two points, you can do that. Uh, subtitle. Uh, why don't I include subtitles? Well, this is live, and I don't have the ability to do subtitles at the moment. But that is something to look into, Izoko. Let's see here. Um, yeah, go see. There was a question. There was a question that I missed a little bit ago. I try to get all the questions to make sure. Okay, so here's the thing. So um, if I'm understanding with the hard space thing, so a lot of artists live with quick save. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't personally, but quick save is the fastest way to eat up hard space and ZBrush needs hard space. So if you're on PC, same thing with Mac, you can go up to, I think it's drive utility in Mac, but you could see your space. You need to have like at least, you need to have like, a good amount of space on your hard drive like uh i would say maybe minimum 100 gigs of free hard space even still zbrush quick save eats up a lot so um double just always check your hard space i personally work off of external hard drives i'm working off of an external hard drive and I, all my operating system lives within the main hard drive so everything on this disc is just it's just literally um just programs and tools that i use on a regular basis where ZBrush, like I said, Z, uh, where your project files get big and quick saves are all project files. They're not ZTLs. They're, well, they save almost everything actually, but being fair here, it saves a ZPR, it could save a ZTL, it could save all sorts of file types. It like saves everything for you, trying to back it all up. So um, you're saving a lot of information and the heavier your scope, the bigger the file. I've had a file that is just a hundred gigabytes. That, that's massive. So deleting your quick saves is the fastest way to to uh, clear up any issues with ZBrush and hard drive space. Yeah, save files without undo history helps for sure. The only time I do uh, undo history when it comes to saving ZBrush uh, projects is when I'm prepping for um, either I'm going to do a recording or I'm prepping for some sort of 3D print and I want to go back and have that history there when I can. So that's all super helpful stuff. Anyway, hopefully that helped out going back to the Z modeler. Hopefully that helped out. I encourage you to really play and try to build something with it. Um, and the way you would approach it, again, I was used to all sorts of other programs and then I, I spent just like a little bit of time working on it. And then I really ultimately super enjoyed the way that ZBrush functions with ZModeler. I think it's very powerful. Um, it is a different thought process, but the way it is, it's in my opinion, is more intuitive. And that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. So definitely give it a solid go and then just try things. Again, there are some aspects uh, that it just won't do certain things. Again, we don't support N-Gons because N-Gons can't be subdivided. Um, and because we're a subdivision based program, it's hard to come through and subdivide something that can't be subdivided. <laughs> so that's where some of the differences lie, but with with obviously valid and, on, and honest reasons. So thoughts and things and feelings and stuff. So the difference between uh, QMesh and Extrude is that Extrude, like I showcased at one point, it just extrudes out but QMesh actually connects itself with the other edge loops. It has edge loop detection and it welds itself to certain aspects. So it's not just an extrusion. It's like an extrusion that's preserving the actual model itself that respects the, uh, the, the edge loops and polygons. And it tries its best to actually welds that together for you. So you don't have to. 
I have to turn back face mask on again. This wing is very, very thin. So let's come back up here. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, what's up, Lord? How you doing? This guy's all, I found out the other day, ZBrush took 300 gigabytes from just for my quick says. Yes, that's, that's, yes, that is a thing. That is a legitimate thing. It happens, so just, yeah. I personally am a rebel and I don't live with quick saves. Um, I have relied on some of them from time to time. I'm happy I did, but I save almost all the time. Like even when I lost work, like I was saying when I first jumped on today, um, I don't have, I, I like had done some extra work to this guy and then um, I lost it. And IE, it's like somewhere else and I don't know where it's at, but I saved so often that um, it, I'm not rebuilding too much. Like, it's fine. So what I've lost is not anywhere near. That's just, which is fine. That's how I sculpt. But if you if you live on quick saves, just know, it's it's a good idea to, to clear that out once in a while. Okay. Trying to make this wing make sense. You would have a little bit more. You should have a little bit more musculature. There should be some extra muscles there, actually, that kind of help with this. Wing connections always fascinate me. I think I need to study more, more birds and like penguins and such. Okay. I save my files as tools, yes. Yep, and uh, in, now with 2023, we have the save as, save next, and save feature, so I come up and hit this a lot. I've actually changed this to be control S for me because I don't use projects enough, but um, the quick saves fall under the current projects because that's for both projects and ZTLs, but yeah, I just come here, control, alt, tap this, and say control uh, S. So now when I'm working, and I'm just constantly, I'll just hit save and it saves my, my project for me. So I save a lot more frequently now that that's a part of ZBrush. It's one of those uh, quality of life updates that I've loved so much. Bats, yes, bats, that would be great too. I limited 15 quick saves now, but I'm pretty used to my save files, uh, to save my files all the time, nice, yeah. Okay. Okay. What's interesting about this character, so right now, I'm just kind of refining. This is something actually I realized I don't stream enough of. Um, I always felt like this stuff was like super boring, but this model needs it. Um, the refinement process, this is something that um, I, this is where all artists want to get, like you just want to refine, refine. Um, and I, I just love this face so much. So hopefully it's not, <laughs> hopefully it's not too like, what is he doing? There's some connections here too. I have poly groups, so I can come in here to this arm. I'll tell you forearm anatomy, oh my gosh. Forearm anatomy is something that like, I need to get better at. Okay, I'm gonna grab this guy. Grab these guys here. I need to clean this up. His forearms are weak. <laughs> okay, so remember I always say reference is key, right? So don't be afraid to be like, all right, let's, let's go for our muscles. Yes. Yes. Here, actually. So this is what I do. When I do research on this stuff, what I'm always looking at, too. Of course, you can always do this. 
anatomy for sculptors. I do this a lot. I can't type, but so I'll do something like this. I own this book. It's a great book, by the way. Highly recommend it. Okay. Zoom in here just a little bit. So I'm really focused on like the shape language and the muscles. So these back ones come straight down where these other ones wrap over. So that's super important. So I want to make sure that I get all that. So, and of course there's a little bit of a twist to his arm, right? So I need to make sure that I get all that right. Refine, refine. If you think something is boring, then so do uh, most other people probably, which means we all need help <laughs> when we can get how to do it properly. No, absolutely, yeah. It is It is fascinating. I love streaming. Um, like, I, I love it so much. Um, if I could do it just all the time and never get away, never stop, that's what I'd be doing. But like in my head, sometimes I'm like, okay, I need to be super entertaining. <laughs> but also too, this is like knowledge that like all of us need, like all of us, you know, improve upon every day. So for me, I'm like, have fun, do it. This is the fun stuff anyway. Tell you guys, you know, even, even I go through imposter syndrome sometimes where I'm just like, Man, why? <laughs> Just why? So, this is why I love streaming, though, because then I could come in and hang out and talk to everyone. And I like talking and working. It's probably why this works so well for me. But, okay, let's check that anatomy a bit. Come through. we go <clears throat> dude seriously zerchan yeah forearm with all the those extenders and flexors and then when the arm gets twist yeah that's the thing like knowing that this this twist over like, this is where like kind of happy that i don't have too much body fat on my arms but even still like looking at bodybuilders and seeing how things are just kind of feeling the movement on what something's possible i'll do this a lot where like i'm looking at something and then I'm like, okay, well, if I have this here, is this a pot? Like, does this make sense? Is this a thing that I can actually do? So trying to keep that grounded. You always want it to feel like it's, it's grounded in reality somewhere. And the other aspect too, is like looking on the inside here of the arms seeing how that stuff connects like this part of the muscle always I'm bad at muscle names I can barely I can I butcher them all the time but right here where this forearm is on this drawing in particular this confused me for so long and the way this stretches out especially knowing that this actually has like a little bit of a split but he's not super shredded so I'm not trying to get him to be super ripped. Like that's the other thing too. Putting the fat pads back on, you lose a lot of that detail. So it's about getting the main shapes. And that's almost more important than anything else. But one of the things I've learned, so, you know, um, is that when you are doing the muscles, if you put the stroke of the brush in the exact way that the muscle fibers work, it actually, to me, feels like it's more natural. And then you don't have to worry about smoothing all those details out as much. So 
that's been my bit of a take on it and then i have this right here where the main elbow is there's a bone so i'm actually going to take the move brush and then let's take the damn standard I cut that back in a little bit There we go. Emperor Cheese, what's up, man? Do, 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 do. Um, you wish ZBrush had an option for auto increment saving tool. It does actually in, in 2023. We've implemented that now. It's actually called Save Next. It's right up here. So not in the auto save function, but if we go back to Let's actually load up here. Let's come in. Let's go this right here. Let's go to Watto. So right now I have 007. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here real fast. I'm going to hit save next. I'm going to pop that back. Now I have 008. It respects the actual numbering system that you did. If you did not have a numbering system, it would actually turn around and create a numbering system for you. And so if you just labeled something Watto and then you hit save next, it would actually say Watto underscore zero zero one. So we do, we have implemented that in now. Jaru crew, how you doing? I'm good. Thank you for coming in. How are you? Hey, Emperor. Thanks, man. Yeah, we, we're getting a lot of work on this guy. I'm really excited about him. I want to start posing him soon. So there's a lot more refinement that needs to happen. But this is about where we are with him right now. I'm leaving the belts and clothing a little, like, extremely low poly right now. Just because I don't need to have it... It doesn't need to be super detailed at this moment in time. It just needs to look like a belt. And I think I've gotten the majority of that in there. And so now I want to actually add in some other things. So let's do this. Let's... Let's clean up the rest of his leg. I wanted to, this is too, his legs are too defined for me. So I wanted to add just a little bit of uh, body weight. I think his legs just don't make sense as far as. He's a thick boy. So he doesn't need to have like serrations where it doesn't make sense. But they can still have some. They can still show just a teeny, teeny bit. And also, too, I think right here, his, uh, his backside is a little too bubbly. So let's tone that down just a little bit. Okay, yeah. When I look at him from the side, if I put perspective on... And I changed perspective to draw size of 85, which is about where you should be. Um, that's going to give me a, a better sense of how he looks. Although with 3D printing, orthographic is, is, is ideal. You sculpt an orthographic because it gives you a better sense of what it's going to look like as a print. But if you want to use perspective, 85 will do the trick. So let's do this. Let's actually create a base for him now. So he's hovering over something. Then we can start figuring out a pose. So I'm going to stamp this guy. And then let's come on down. Let's insert. We're going to insert a cylinder. We're actually going to make a base base. It's all about that base. Get that bad boy out here. Let's solo that out. Hit frame. I'm going to turn perspective off. I'm fine. Thank you. I really like watching the stream and all the stuff you post on YouTube. Thanks a lot. You're absolutely welcome. Yeah, his anatomy is really good and it feels really natural. Thank you so much. Who is your favorite instructor of all time and why? Ooh. Favorite instructor of all time. Okay. All right. Favorite instructor of all time actually has to go to my drum instructor, Mike Johnston. Um, so <laughs> I've had a lot of instructors in a lot of different fields, but in fact, you know, it's not sculpting related, but if you like drumming, um, I'm just going to shout him out real fast, but there's a reason why. And I realized I was watching him the other day, looking at like a, at like a drum lesson that he was doing. 
and it was super cool because his approach to things is what I love the most and I've taken the way he's taught and I've used it for myself so for example he's all about like so he was somebody who when I sat in his drum class and I was like man okay um, I want to be a good drummer this is what I want to do and his mindset was like okay look I sucked at drumming when I was a kid I was horrible at it I didn't do a good job at all it was just like it was like horrific um so i was like okay like that's not that's not a discouraging start but then as he went through it he was like he was he learned that he could fail at something he would try and try again and then he would fail and that failure motivated him to try harder and that was something that i never quite heard before and so i was like okay well like if if he's somebody that can sit there and you know take a look at you know something that he really wants to do and apply his day-to-day -to, -day to it to the point where you know he's like not afraid to fail and that failure is going to lead to some of his success it motivated me to always put my best foot forward and so with that the more i watched him the more i was like inspired by the way he taught which which in turn made me actually want to get into teaching as well um so yeah there was a lot to it so he forever like the way he did things just really just was super inspiring um and so yeah i was like uh just amazingly taken back by that so everything the way he taught everything that i have learned the, the way i've learned stuff actually has come a lot from the way he teaches so yeah not quite what you'd expect, but now my favorite, my favorite sculpting instructor, um, hats off to Shane Olson. 100%. The more you know. <laughs> okay, we're going to create this really unique base here. The imposter center my battle with too i started sculpting in 20 you started zbrush in 2021 poured every waking hour into it with everything i shared i never got much love i felt like i was just not that great oh dude casey i totally understand man and someone recently hired me to do creatures with them in their game boom there you go man dude that's so awesome congratulations on that that is super cool it takes time, man. It takes a lot of time. I've been sculpting in ZBrush for going on nine years now. And I've been a professional for four of them. Yeah. <laughs> so it takes time. Yeah, I, I totally get it. Okay. So I have something here that I think is kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool so we're going to come through i'm actually going to go with inset all my poly groups and i'm actually going to go ahead hover over this guy and q mesh i'm going to push this in a little bit just tapping alt a few times cool yeah that's kind of cool and then i'm going to come through here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to poly groups and group by normals and then from here, I'm going to go to Crease. Crease Paul Gabriel's. Give me something a little bit more like this, which I think is pretty cool. But now I got to look at like this part's rounding here, and I don't want that. So what I can do is actually come over here, hover over this edge, and I can do Crease, and I can do Crease by Edge. And if I click this, yeah, that gives me that nice sharp edge. So I crease here, crease here. I'll crease here as well, just to make sure. So now these edges are creased. And so these are creasing in. So when I click this, now it keeps a nice, solid, sharp edge. And then same thing here. Let's actually come in. Let's take a look at this here, what we got going on here. Okay, so I'm gonna crease this, crease that, crease that. Crease that as well. Here, here, here. There we go. Nice, nice sharp edges happening there. 
perfect. So something like this, just kind of a nice little, nice little base on that. And now here, what I'm going to do is I actually want this to connect a little bit. So I'm going to hover over this area, Q mesh, going to drag this out. And actually, okay, here's what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to mask this section off. And I'm going to bring this in so it looks a little bit flatter like that. Now I'm going to use the clip curve. And I'm going to come down here at the bottom. And that's going to make sure that it's nice and straight. Actually, no. Actually, no. I think that's fine. That's actually pretty flat. What we could do now is actually do this. Let's expand that out. Now let's come through and make sure that that one, there we go. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay, now let's fix this edge here. Let's crease that side and crease that side, crease here and crease here. Hit D. Yeah, there we go. Hey, you are so welcome, Casey. So welcome. That's a cool story. It's amazing when somebody from a whole different field of experience can inspire us to do what we do. Absolutely. Honestly, you know, I had never left the country before and I've been, you know, uh, thankfully in a position that I was able to leave the country. And um, that whole experience like woke me up. There's like so much inspiration now. It's, it's amazing. Just like how much I learned from that. And half of it had nothing to do with art so just just the ability to like go have a new experience has inspired me to try new things and i'm super jazzed by it okay check this out so we're gonna move all of this guy a little bit more upright there we go all right now let's get some sand up in here Let's get some sand. <laughs> All right, let's actually put this in a folder. Here, no, wait, let's go here. Hitting all the wrong things here. Let's go here. Let's click this guy. Let's put this in a folder, call this base. And then let's actually get some sand up in here. So, okay. We're just gonna go ahead and get a sphere up. Up on here and scale that bad boy up. Thanks, Master Fu. Yeah, much appreciated. Don't leave the country. They do metric out there. <laughs> Remember, I'm in 3D printing, so we do metric there too. <laughs> Can you explain how you're making that base and selecting the faces and extruding? Absolutely, yeah. Actually, yeah, I kind of just breezed through that, yeah. Um, well, luckily, this is gonna be recorded. This will be, and this will be a chapter. But basically my mindset of this was that I'm gonna back this up in time. We're gonna come here real quick. I'm just gonna go through the history. So I had this cylinder here, okay? And the idea was that I wanted just something simple but kind of futuristic and futuristic stuff is basically based on planes and and and, and planes and crevices and greeble. Those are the main things that make anything sci-fi and sometimes hexagon shapes and and weird angles sometimes make make to be your best friend. So um, I went ahead and deleted those edge loops there, and then I sized it down to something that I thought was reasonable. I knew I wanted this to be relatively tapered, so I just kind of tapered it with a gizmo and then created some edge loops. Now here, I wanted to have this kind of breaking off a little bit. So the idea was that, let me go ahead and use extrude or Q mesh to actually generate this little shape here. Cause I wanted, I, in my mind, I was like, let's put some sand in this area. So it was helpful to utilize this. And again, pressing and holding the space bar, I was able to select Q mesh and then play group all. And then of course two can just make some temporary selections. And I was just really experimenting and playing. And at some point I just decided to crease everything because I wanted to keep it as low as possible. And then, yeah, just cleaning up the, just cleaning up what I had saw. I'm keeping it as simple as I possibly can. I didn't want to go too, too far. But the idea was that I wanted this to kind of look like a thing without it being a thing. And in Star Wars, you have a lot of just random planes and, and crevices and cuts. So I thought, let's just do something like that. And now, so this is the 
So it's really no, that's the thing. Sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to it. We're just like, I'm just experimenting. And if I think something looks cool, then I'm just gonna do that. Like, yeah, um, I know that's, that's probably the wor worst explanation <laughs> and I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of it. It's just, just kind of exploring the different attributes of what it could be and then seeing where it goes from there. Like here is just gonna be some sand. Um, some sand ish like i'm just gonna call it sand and then we're gonna try to make it look like sand and i'm gonna do something i do not like sculpting on these poles these poles are the worst things to sculpt on so let's actually do ourselves a flavor and let's come up here and with symmetry turned on and just like your basic move brush or something i didn't need the modeler for this I'm gonna give you guys some secret sauce tips on how I actually zebra mesh things. So having X axis is, you know, having symmetry is always key when doing anything zebra mesher. But my secret sauce to this is that I like to actually start at a relatively higher number. This is super low, it's at eight. So I actually wanna go ahead and just, I'm gonna kick it to about 10. Five is fine for something this low, but if you're starting with like a few hundred thousand to a few million, don't be afraid slide that number up it's gonna be okay and then go to keep groups slide that down to zero that's just in itself this is something where um the mesh itself is always kind of smoothing and changing a little bit so this uh, prevents it from smoothing or, or changing too drastically and then i just go adaptive size down to zero because i want adapt turned on because i want zbrush to know that the quads need to still adapt to whatever shape it is but I want even quads as much as possible. And this in itself is gonna give me some really good results. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit zebra mesh. And now you can see here, I got relatively something simple, but now that pole is gone. I don't know if you guys can hear this song, but I love this song. Now I'm actually gonna go half and hit retry a few times. And this is gonna give me some really nice topology. And if I get this little bubble here, it's okay. This little thing that's happening, a little bit of a dippy dip. Then just with the uh, just with the clip curve, I can actually clip that, and that gives me a nice straight edge. And this, I can work with this. I got poles exactly where I need them to be. I can even come through here if I wanted to. Check this out. I'm going to use a new feature in ZBrush by hovering over this edge here. I'm going to go crease the complete loop, and then with that creased edge, I'm going to come down here to UV. This is something that I really, really fought for. <laughs> this is the thing I was like, please do this. Now we can actually create an unwrap map. So I can actually kick this. I didn't mean to border it that high, geez. Um, I can actually kick this at, go border back to four. If I want 4K, click that. Uh, unwrap by creased edges. So now I can take that. Now I have this plane right here. So I just made a UV I can live with, with zebra mesher and that creased edge. Now, if you don't want that creased edge, that's okay. You can go ahead to geometry or you can go to Z modeler, hover up crease and just delete that creased edge and that UV still exists. So it's there, ready to work. And now I can make this, this is now sculptable. So I can, I can go ahead and start manipulating this how I want. And I'm going to try a couple things. I'm gonna go ahead with some pinch trails, maybe. Subdivide a couple times. I'm gonna turn off. Okay, this is, that's a cloth one, so maybe. Let's actually just pop this on real fast. No, I exposed it, didn't mean to. Okay, there we go. So yeah, that's how I do it. You're working very fast. Any zebra shortcuts you use? Um, for the Z modeler stuff, the only shortcuts I use are the spacebar. And I drop down using Shift D and then D to step back up on the subdivisions. Yes, sir. I'll try this. And if it's cool, that's what I'm going to do. You just described the whole creative process. <laughs> exactly. That is the whole creative process. I'm gonna try this, hopefully it's cool. Hey, look, I did a thing. Okay, so now I wanna actually make this look like ground and that's what we're gonna do. 
Unwrap out of crease. That's awesome. Yes. Unwrap out of crease. Yes. That is awesome. And I've, yeah, we had a whole conversation and I was like, please do this thing. Please. <laughs> please. 100%. Yeah. Uh, on the topic of simple geometry, Ian, is it feasible? Uh, how feasible is the pipeline of creating hair cards in ZBrush and exporting them into something like Substance? And then a live render. Some people use Blender and Maya, but I haven't found ZBrush's approach to use a uh, more organic use. Okay, so there is a brush. So you can do hair cards out of a couple things. You can actually use the fiber mesh system to create hair cards. However, I feel like that's a little outdated these days. Now what you could do is utilize these flat curve or flat uh, curve snap. Curve flat snap. And the reason why is because... Okay, I have subdivisions on. So let me drop it back down and delete higher. And now if I drag this out, I can actually have these cards here. So I can actually utilize these cards here for that. As I understand it, that was actually the intent of these cards is because people were using fiber mesh to, uh, to create hair cards. In fact, there is an awesome tutorial on that that I think um, the man, the legend, the myth, Mr. Michael Pav had done himself. And, but now with, with these, you could actually utilize these. And I've seen a lot of artists use these for hair cards. So um, this, is, this is the approach I would take. So if you're wanting to, to draw out clumps of hair and then you have textures and stuff that you can create. Um, as far as the creative process, I've never really worked with hair cards. That's beyond my knowledge. Um, I come from toys and games, um, as in like prop assets and some characters, but most of the stuff I've done for games and toys all have been ge uh, geometric or has geometry based to it. I've never had the pleasure of playing with hair cards, but as I understand it, that's a system that would be good for that. I used to use Maya. I don't use Maya much anymore. I've never really, doesn't really fit in my pipeline personally. Yeah, we got to figure out how to float with that magnet. Absolutely, yeah. If you suggest me some concept to model in my as a new artist. Not well, sure what you mean by that. Yep, Pav did a hair card demo. Uh, and then, and yeah, absolutely. Uh, what is the benefit of crease? Shouldn't we always put support edges on the piece blah 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 yeah so the benefit of crease is that so zbrush is is subdivision based so the benefit of crease is that you can actually kind of skip that step and what you can do is because again as you're smoothing or as you're as you're um subdividing so we got something like this creasing can help you actually creasing can actually help you preserve those edges a little bit nicer um, because let's say this is the, this is the low, this is the low, low. We don't need this to go any lower. And this edge right here is, is going to be there when we go ahead and bake the high mesh to the low mesh. So if I wanted to give myself some really good success, because this would be the low model that I baked all the details onto, if I preserve this edge with creasing, so again, coming up here to crease, and I crease this edge here. So I say, yep, that's the one. And then I subdivide up. This is going to be my high mesh. Now those edges actually line in. So again, depending on what it is, this is a prop. So I don't need any real true edge support here on its own. You could absolutely do that. Um, I do it all the time as well. Like if you wanted to come through here and say like, yeah, this support this edge, support this edge. What's nice about this is that this creates a natural fall off that's more more um, accommodating and this this is still very valuable but creasing kind of helps you kind of cheat it a little bit and lets you get through the process a little bit quicker so depending on what the final project is put the proper loops where you feel they need to go definitely encourage sometimes i do this way other times i don't because again this is going to be most likely 3d printed yeah i'm going to put uvs and and actually go through and texture him probably later because that would be fun um ultimately you know sometimes you need to sometimes you don't so it really is just like a best case wherever you need them to be 
Okay. We're actually going to be working on something kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, we're going to be working with alpha and texture brushes and multiple alphas. So we're going to be working with dual brushes right now. If you did not know about the curve snap, I should check that out. I was eyeing hair cars for something like game models. You're absolutely welcome. Yeah, go ahead and do that. So my, my overall expert is in toys, 3D printing, and games. Oh, Ralph Argosetti went to Netflix now? Nice. Yeah, I knew he left uh, Sony Santa Monica. I wonder if they're going to do a third iteration of, of, of God of War and how that will look. I'm, I'm really excited about knowing that. Okay, so I'm going to want this to be kind of... I want a couple alphas. So I want to be able to have a little bit of both here. I um, haven't quite decided if I want... Well, let's try something here. It's supposed to be sand-ish. Mm, maybe I want something like this. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and let's open this up. Let's see. Okay, let's subdivide up a few times. So this out. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, great. All right, cool. So what I'm doing here is I'm working with a couple different brushes. So right now I'm working with the, what's known as a dual brush. So if you go to alpha and texture, you have two different alphas down here. And I actually have a way to control this based on pen pressure. So if I'm lightly touching at some and I get a little bit of the first, and then as I press harder, I get more of the second. So looking a little bit like that. And now what I'm going to do is just kind of play with combination of pressing alt and adding where I think I need this. But I also want to preserve this backside here. So let me actually go under auto masking, back face mask, go back to alpha texture. And what I could do too is push this over a little bit more. So think of this as like, on the left hand side is actually directly above this left alpha and this right hand side is over this right alpha. So the further over this is, the more I'm getting one, the more I have to press harder to get that second one. So I can just come here and kind of play with when this actually ends up. Give me a little bit of a curve so I can step these on over. Say something like that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. So here now I'm gonna start holding Alt and kind of kicking this in a little bit. Maybe drop that down just a little bit. There we go. So now I can press harder in some spots and get just a little bit of a different vibe. There we go. I can get like maybe a bit of a sand dune thingy up here. Back that up just a little bit. How could you add recessed and extruded circles all around objects such as your base? Ooh, that's a great question. Okay, so we can actually do that a couple ways. Let me just finish this thought here real fast. Do that a couple ways. Now the thing with Z Modeler, to going back on that, so I answer, so I'll answer that question at the exact same time, is that you can you don't have to keep things welded to each other. So when you're utilizing Z Modeler, you can actually get a different texture here. So when you're using Z Modeler, don't think everything has to be welded to each other. That's actually super important. So there's a couple ways I would actually approach. I'm gonna use Smooth Peaks for a second. Calm that down just a little bit and then build on top of this. So with Z Modeler, again, not welding stuff in, how I would actually approach that 
So if I look at just the base here, this is truly symmetrical at this point, and we are in some sort of home position. I'm going to duplicate this and send it true home, just for anyone who's in 2022 still. So I'm truly home at this point. Now what I could do is either I can come up here to my um, transform and activate symmetry and use radial symmetry. And then I can actually determine how many goes around my object. And I have X, Y, and Z. So if we first look at ZBrush, when you're looking at it just head on with this guy staring at you in the cam view, X is left to right, Y is up and down, and then Z is depth, right? So now with that being said, going back to our transform, I'm gonna to wanna to be on the Y axis with radial symmetry turned on, and now I can actually pick how many objects go around. So I can have multiple objects, and here I could pick something like, let's say, a cylinder, and I can now drag that cylinder out in this shape here. So this is one way to go about doing that. So if I wanted everything on this plane here, so I have four planes, radial symmetry, I will say four. And then I'm gonna go ahead, turn off dynamic. And now I can have this thing protruding in like this. This is one way to do it, okay? With that radial symmetry turned on and you did wanna have things welded together, but you wanted to have some cylinders, you know, coming through, then you can actually utilize your Z modeler for that. And let's say, actually wanted to let's put an edge loop so i'm holding the space bar hovering over an edge adding a, an edge loop relatively in the middle do you want it perfectly in the middle press and hold the space bar on the edge go to multiple uh, edge loops with specified elevation drag out a bunch and then kick it all the way back down to one and then that will be perfectly in the middle this is crease so we can take that crease off by just holding on the edge Spacebar, crease, complete edge loop, press and hold alt, and that will get rid of that. Now what I could do here is on this point, okay, I can actually do hovering on the point, press and hold the space bar, and I can do split, and I can actually split here. And again, I'm doing radial symmetry, so it's happening everywhere. And then I can select this area here, and then extrude this out this way. This would also work here if I tap there and there. So those are other ways, that's like the welded approach. The other way you could go about doing it is you can actually insert. So let's go ahead and insert, say another cylinder like this. I'm gonna go ahead and just open up and just have these two items showing here and here. So I have now these guys here. So now what you could do with this is I'm just gonna lift this up above so we could see it. And we're gonna use a ray mesh for this. Now a ray mesh is is so freaking awesome. So array mesh allows you to really see everything that's projected but control only one object. So if I say turn on array mesh and now I want to go ahead and look at this crazy menu, the only things you really need to focus on with array mesh is how many times are you repeating an object and what is the direction that you're going to manipulate or move it. So I turn on array mesh. I do want to turn on transpose and lock position. This is going to be super helpful for making sure that everything is truly centered with a gizmo. And then now I can repeat this a few times. So let's repeat this four times, which will give me four in total. And then down here, I'm actually gonna wanna go ahead and if I grab the gizmo here, you'll see, again, nothing's really happening, right? So now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and let's do a, let's do a rotate and I'm gonna rotate this on the Y, 360 degrees. And now I can move this out or I can move this forward. And now I can come through and I can position this exactly as I want. So I can come in, come down here, rotate this down and start putting these in. And you'll notice that I'm only affecting the one. So any sculptural change I make to this as well so if I come over here and say, you know, let's go to geometry, edge loop. Let's go ahead and delete loops, okay? And now I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down. Make these look a little bit different. Clear that out, recenter that back to the mesh. Maybe scale that in. Maybe use Z modeler on this. So maybe I want this to be a little bit of a bubble. So I'm gonna go insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation. I'm gonna start bringing this up and kind of bubble this up. 
now I have these kind of buttons effect on there. So these are ways that you could go about doing that. And once you're done and you're happy with this, you can leave this on because this actually renders. It'll actually render even with Redshift turned on. If I turn on Redshift, come through here, turn on Redshift, and just do a quick, just do a quick render. It always has to send over for the first time. So when you're doing any type of Redshift render, it takes a minute, but it even works with the Redshift render at this point. So now that that's there. And so I don't ever have to really make that a solid mesh until I'm ready. And when I'm ready, I just go back under array mesh down here at the bottom. I want to make that a mesh, make that a mesh. And now that's actual geometry before it's just a projection or a preview, more of a preview. And then afterwards it becomes actual mesh. So those are ways that you can actually go ahead and get different things built off of an object. So especially when you're trying to keep things as low as possible, array mesh could be your best friend. All right. If you're not enjoying what you're modeling and sculpting, you will struggle no matter what the software you use. That's 100%, yeah. That is, that's very, very true. Uh, do do. Making sure I didn't miss anything. But, um, okay, yeah, so... Will that work with adding text, the array mesh? Yeah, if you if you generate text, yeah, so come up over here, Z plugin, text, and we say new text. Test that, there you go. You got this guy right here, right? Come on, array mesh, transpose, lock that. Let's repeat that. Let's repeat that 12 times, because why not? And then here, again, we're gonna go ahead and just, on the rotation, gonna rotate this around. 360, boom, there it is. So yeah, you could do some really cool stuff with it. And again, too, anything that the gizmo does, it, does, it repeats all of it. So you're able to really have some fun with this. And again, you can offset this stuff too. You don't have to sit here, you don't have to sit here and just only use it for rotation purposes. You can actually do full strings. You can offset, you can do pivot points. Like there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with this, making really fun, interesting shapes, all being driven off of this one piece. So it's just all in what you wanna do. And at any point in time, you can just make that actual mesh. Yeah, array mesh works with anything that's geometry, which is really awesome. Hit F to frame that back in. You are so welcome. Absolutely. Array mesh is one of those really cool things that uh, quite personally, I'm like, man, I need to use it even more than I do. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and save real quick. Yes, you can. Absolutely. So if you go to Z plugin, you can actually co Z plugin, come on down and you can say uh, new SVG or uh, edit your SVG and bring it on in. And then you can control the extrusion rate. So going over these, this text plugin for a little bit. Let's see, do I have anything? Do I have an SVG that I can show? <laughs> that is the question. Here, let me see. Let's see if I can find one. Let me see real quick. Let's see if I can find one real fast. Let's go SVG. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think this one will work out fine. So open file location. Just gonna go ahead and copy that. I'll throw this on my desktop. That makes sense. Okay, so come on down here. And when I hit cancel, when you do something where you're like, okay, yeah, new SVG, then you hit escape, it just pops up unsupported file is just a name type. So if you, if you hit escape out of that, don't worry, but hit new SVG, come into my desktop 
and I have this logo here. And so it brought in the ZBrush logo SVG that I was working on. Now, of course, too, if I go ahead and adjust the resolution and maybe some of the beveling action and the bevel extrusion, I, again, I can mess with all of this here. I could turn adaptive off or on curvature. Like I can mess with the SVG as much as I want. So you can come in here and just really, really just go nuts on that. And then of course too, if you wanted to rebuild this, so let's say I don't want any beveling on this and I would like to rebuild this at this point, then you can move in. This is where our good old best friend, poly, uh, auto groups and group by normals will come into play. So, and some things that I'll do too, is I'll actually turn off the smooth and I'll divide up a few times just to give me a little bit denser of a mesh. And then here, Z modeler. So this is actually, I'm sorry, Z remesher. This is actually half a mil. So I'm gonna kick this up to like 25, keep groups, drop that down, adaptive size, drop that down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, let's go ahead and look at this and see what we got. So you want to be a specialist in 3D. Uh, oh, you didn't know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I read like two things at once. Um, so best render for ZBrush. ZBrush now has Redshift inside of it. So going to just go uh, at the top down. ZBrush has has uh, Redshift inside of it now in 2023. Redshift is quite powerful. Um, as somebody who used Keyshot a lot, Redshift is very comparable. It's very powerful. And it, it, it's really the most benefit I've gotten with Redshift in ZBrush is the fact that I can render 90 million polys inside of, inside of ZBrush. Like no cell pitch, just fact, that's how it is. And it's really awesome to be able to get quick concepts out quickly and effectively. So I can just sculpt, do a render real quick, see what it looks like, continue sculpting. Um, no, you can't sculpt and render at the same time, but again, first iterations, that's kind of where we're at. Um, so honestly, I really do like that. Plus the bridge now to go Z to Cinema 4D that supports Redshift natively with all the fancier stuff. You really want to get down the rabbit hole of Redshift rendering, then that works out for sure. So honestly, I've moved I've moved from Keyshot to Redshift. I was already looking at Redshift and I think it was super awesome. So as an artist, not just somebody who works at Maxon, as an artist, I really see the power of, of Redshift, especially in ZBrush and what it could do. And it's changed the way I've even done some of my freelance work. So on a serious note, now Redshift is is, is killer. Um, and then yeah, Array Mesh looks uh looks killer. Yeah, Array Mesh is very powerful. I I would say I've taught Array Mesh more in the last few months to artists that like I swear they knew it. <laughs> it's amazing you guys have it. All of you who have ZBrush right now, no matter what version you have, as long as you've updated to at least the 2022 world, uh, you have uh, Array Mesh. Array Mesh has been there a while. So super powerful. Um, and then I want to be a specialist in uh, ZBrush 3D design. What should I do? I mean, exactly with with little steps. I just started out and I did a couple models, but every time I'm wondering if there are faster ways. So that's, that's a great question. And honestly, honestly, the answer is going to be a lot simpler than you think. But first and foremost, ZBrush is used in 13 plus industries. ZBrush is used in a lot of it. A lot of a lot of people have thought for a long time, oh, ZBrush is only in games and film. It's not. Yeah, it, it, that's a lot of it. I, I'm not gonna lie, but it's in so much more than just games and film. So the fact of the matter is that you can definitely break into multiple industries utilizing ZBrush. So if you want to be somebody who is fluent in ZBrush as a program, then that is definitely a way that's going to help you get there. That's the first one. The other aspect to that is it's all about experience. Everybody wants to be fast really quickly. Everybody tries to like, I need to get there ASAP. And there's not anything necessarily wrong with that. But the problem is that Art is a journey and there is a lot of there's a lot of times where it's just gonna take you understanding a thing before you actually can do it. So there's a lot of stuff that honestly 
no joke, real story. I was at Lightbox last year and I had the privilege and pleasure to sculpt alongside of Raphael Grissetti and it was amazing. It blew my mind. I couldn't believe that the, that he was even chatting with me. Like, and he's such a humble dude and down to earth. And I was just like, I was just like, this is somebody I've looked up to. This is somebody that like, when I got started, he was some of the first models I saw was his work. So I was like blown away by just like the fact that I'm now standing there watching him work. Right. And when I got the chance to like watch him work and do some stuff, I realized quickly that like, man, he's just like he's blasting it he's just going in and he's just not too concerned about anything but the design aspect of it and while i consider myself a good sculptor in that moment i was just like absorbing everything because i finally understood his approach where i've seen his anatomy videos like bought and paid his anatomy stuff went through it years ago and i just wasn't ready to hear that information i wasn't ready for what I was looking at and when I finally saw it and I was able to understand it that's when growth happens so I know there's like this tendency to want to like get there quickly and and just like you know try to try to overall um get to the finish line but enjoy the journey because when we get there it's going to be that much better you're going to understand so much more of it like it it's not something that just happens overnight and everyone learns differently so yeah there are some there are some people who have just like have done a thing and then two years later they're like amazing and you're like i hate you <laughs> how and some of us including myself like i had to sit down and practice 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 hone 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 like and not concern myself with all the software drama and not concern myself with all the things that I could be doing or should be doing. It's what did I need to do to achieve my goal? And my goal was to become a better artist and understand the tools I was utilizing. And through that, um, a lot of hard work, I was able to get to a point where I was able to go. Um, so again, I know this might sound like, Ugh, okay, I've heard this answer before, but seriously, it's the truth. You know, there's a lot of it is just time time behind the wheel and you'll get there guarantee it so just be be patient um you know again sometimes what might take somebody three years could take you 10 and that's okay and if you're okay with that if you can be okay with that then trust me it's going to be worth it real talk and network network your butt off you know, whoever you know, like, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, again, I've shared my Discord link. Jump in the, jump in every Discord link of everybody you've known, you know, connect with people, work with them, like, take feedback, ask for feedback. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a big component of constructive feedback. Um, I don't just go on Instagram and say like, okay, your art could improve in this way. I don't do that because I don't believe in that. Um, if somebody needs feedback, they'll ask, but that could, you know, going on and just blasting somebody else's work saying, oh, you know, fix this, fix that. Maybe that's the best thing that they've ever done. And they're just proud of it. And they're sharing that moment. And that's something that I've always considered when I started teaching art. Um, and so I've learned that like, you know what, like when somebody's just sharing, read the text, you know, there's a thing. But when you're ready for feedback, ask for it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to reach out to anyone you think who could give you feedback. If you tag me on Twitter and you're like, man, I did this thing, I'm going to look at it. It might take me a while, but I'm going to look at it. And then if you're like, hey, what do you think? You know, if, you, I, if I can help out, I will, you know. And that's why I share my Discord because that's what that's there for too. So, and you can get the same on the ZBrush Discord. You can get the same on a lot of other artists I know. I'll shout out Anna Carolina. I'll shout out uh, Patrick 4D. Shout out Shane Olson, Michael Palpovich, Mike Thompson, the Stylus League guys. Like, all of us are just amazing people that want to connect and grow as artists. And you guys are amazing. So get in there, network the crap out of it. You guys are going to have fun. And, you know, when you think something is just, you know, your best at that time, accept it. It's okay. Just be like, yeah, this is what I can do right now. Tomorrow I'll be better. And you'll get there.
Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have some coffee now. <laughs> you're patient, but what do you recommend you find out uh, find out how these tools work? So great things. The first thing is you're already here. You're already hanging out. You can ask me anytime I stream. I stream most Wednesdays. There are times because I'm such a busy. I mean, I work at Max and I teach ZBrush. I hop into studios. I hop into to you know. Um, other aspects that require me to go be sent off. So I'm going to Monster Palooza. So I go to shows, I go to studios, I go to training sessions. So every Wednesday I live stream for the most part, but sometimes I have to cancel those streams. But you're here now, so you could be like, hey, I'm stuck on this thing. How do I do this thing? And I and that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help out. So you can always ask that stuff. The other thing too, we have a bunch of information, askzbrush.com. Um, if you go to Ask Zbrush. Uh, on YouTube, there's over 500 videos on, on ZBrush. You know, huge shout out to Joseph Druss back in the day because Joseph Druss was like the, he was the king. And like, no one can replace that man. He did amazing with showcasing, like half of that knowledge right there is, is that I have is thanks to his knowledge that he shared on all of that stuff. Him and Paul Gabriel, like they really pushed the boundary. So utilize that because it's all on YouTube. It's all free. It's there for you. And all that is being moved over to Cineversity because that's the thing at Maxon we truly believe. Training comes first and foremost. You can't do anything with our tools if you don't know how to do them. And that's why I'm on the training team. I'm the lead zebra trainer here and I love teaching this stuff. So please come in, ask your questions, go to those Again, if you go to YouTube and just type in Ask ZBrush or you go to Cineversity on Maxon or you go into AskZBrush.com, which I'm going to link that for you right here. You know, again, all this stuff is here for you. Just go to YouTube. Literally, just do this. Go to YouTube. We're going to do this together. I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to say Z Modeler. Z yeah, spell Ian. <laughs> Z modeler, uh, ask ZBrush, right? Boom. I'm gonna come through here. Z modeler topology brush. I didn't know I could do that. Ask ZBrush. Z modeler curve cylinder. What's happening here? And then come through. And again, yeah, some of these are a little bit longer. Some of these are five minutes. Some of these have been 10, 15 minutes. But it really is about showing the process. And once you start going down this rabbit hole, again, you could just come over here and you could go to our playlist and I'll share this playlist here, which is, where is it? Ask ZBrush volume six. So here you go. So this is how you can learn the tools and this is how we want you to learn the tools. Perfect, perfect. I totally agree, man. Hey, what's up? What's up, Jamie? <laughs> How you doing? I've been using ZBrush for just over a year, and I feel like I've come along just uh, so far just through con consistently absorbing everyone's feedback and knowledge. Yep, and advice. Sculpt something every day. Absolutely sculpt something every day. Yeah, share your stuff. Ask for feedback. It's huge. Absolutely. Um, can you show me how to do a little castle from a concept? Where can I, do where can I send this to you? I tried... Uh, try to do this but every time after two days it was not good well that's okay well first thing like i've mentioned before um everything starts from the valley of the suck that's uh, a phrase i stole from my 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 friend and mentor and trainer shane olson and i'm just going to show you this right here this is my head okay this is what the head was and this is what the head is now and look, his teeth are wrong. <laughs> Why are his teeth like that? What are you doing there, sucker? Hey, what's happening there? Get those, get, get those puppies back in there. What are you doing? There we go. Anyway, so see, <laughs> um, everything starts um, in a not so good position. Um, and over time, um, you'll get it there. So believe you me, again, it's okay. Just consistent. But yeah, you know what? Maybe um, I can tell you this. I did do a series called um, how, how It's Made. So if I come here and I do a How, how It's Made, ZBrush, and I just type Ian. Does that work? I did. Wow, how about that? Okay, great. So I did a couple How It's Made. 
Oh, I actually forgot that I did... I actually did a Halloween-themed prop. Okay, so this is one of them. So I'm going to share a couple of these with you guys, okay? So there's this one, and then I also did... Look at this goofy guy. Who is this guy? Um, my streams are also called How It's Made. And then here is a stylized tank that we built from scratch. These are follow-alongs. Two hours of straight doing it from scratch. So you too can do it. I promise. 100%. Um, there was a whale. A whale. A well that I did. A uh, zebrash uh, well, Ian, maybe. There it is. Boom. And here's a well as well. <laughs> here's a well as well. Um, again, I did all of these within that time frame. It's all about two hours. This one actually went a little bit longer. And I explained the whole process. And you could do a full follow along. For your castle question, start smaller. Don't just go ahead and try to do something massive. The biggest advice I can give is start small and work your way up. So do these projects. There's also... Um, Paul Gabriel did a few of these as well. Um, he did this. If you really want to get into some fun Z modeler stuff, there is this. Um, there is this link here for a coffee uh, dispenser, which is really cool. And then also to this baseball cap. If you want to make a ZBrush baseball cap? I'm just sending all the links now, guys. So here's a ton of stuff. All this is designed to help you guys learn the software. Um, so please jump in there. Hang out. Give it a good shot. There's my, there's my, there's my one of many rants today. <laughs> Which actually was like, that kind of rounds up for the, like, my time is actually, um, my time is up now. But thank you guys all for joining in, coming in. I see all of you here. So, popping in the Discord. So, appreciate all of you coming in. So this is where we're at. So let's finish the thought. Let, let me finish this one part of the base real fast. And yeah, Leonard mentioned it earlier. We should try to get him floating. That would be cool. Um, what I wanted to do... Oh, man. Do I have time? What does this dice look like? I wanted to sculpt his dice. Ah, here we go. Okay. Okay, let's do this real fast. I'm going to do a little bit of a, of a change to this. Because this looks like, just looks like flat and kind of cubish. I'm going to do something real quick. Let's make some dice real fast. So here's the thing. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. So how do I want to do this real fast? Because I wanted the dice either to be in his hand or I want the dice to be like on the floor. Oh, that'd be so cool. I don't know. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. So let's do this. Let's go. Let's, let's use a cube. All right, we're done. Uh, um, let's use a cube. Let's come on up and let's do polycube. And let's actually get eight. Let's go eight by, let's go eight by eight by eight. Eight by eight by eight. Something a little bit dense like that, which would be perfect. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just snap that back. And now, what I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and put this in a folder. Call this dice. I'm going to go insert sphere. Okay. And then here. Let's see. Let's see. Never quite. Let's let's see how far we could push a ray mesh today. I'm going to ray mesh. Boom, boom, boom. And then what I want to do is I'm gonna want six in total, because I have six sides. And then I'm gonna try to do this all in one amount. So I'm gonna rotate this around 360 degrees. Mm, nope, actually, I want this to be four sides. Let's actually come over here to four. Let's turn this one and this one on and this one off. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna turn on live boolean here. Yeah, that could be fun. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And then I'm gonna just gonna do, I'm gonna cheat here a little bit. No sense thing. I'm gonna go to Ray Mesh. I'm actually gonna make this into, I'm gonna make this into a whole thing. So it looks like that. There we go. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna come here to this cube real fast. Actually, yeah, that should be fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and Boolean this folder with, I'm just gonna Boolean it. Let's give me this cube right here. Yeah, that should be fine. And now I'm gonna come through here. Let's just see what this looks like. If I go to zero measure, secret sauce this up, go to 10, go to groups, keep that down, adaptive size. Okay, let's do this real fast. Let's see what we got. Oh, yep. Okay. That actually that actually I can see I can see why I did that. Okay, let's actually do this. So why that did that is I have too many too many repeating shapes here. So I have this guy, I've turned this off for a second. So this guy right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to polygroups. I'm gonna auto group this. Okay, I'm gonna select this guy, select this one. I only want those. So I have too many of the other shapes because I use the ray mesh on the other one. So what this will do now is I'll delete that, simplify it. And then I wanna actually come here, ray mesh, and then do that, perfect. And then let's also polygroup, auto group. So yeah, going a little quick, but that's okay. Now let's come back up here to the top, live Boolean this, come through Boolean that folder. There we go, that's a bit better. Now, if you ever get in a position where it won't Z remesh for you for some reason, you can try to head that off by going to modify topology and then close holes and weld those points just in case. This should be fine. Same thing, secret sauce this moment up. Let's actually start at 10. Freeze group, uh, sorry, um, keep groups. And then adaptive size turned off. There we go. Now I want to see if I can preserve those edges. So I'm going to do detect edges as well. So I just backed up. And now here, I have this little bit of an error on this side. So I'm going to half this and do a retry. And this keeps breaking at this point. So I'm gonna rotate this around to the other side or what you can do is deformation, mirror, and then I can come through because that side's nice. Modify topology, mirror and weld it. And then let's try that one more time. Let's do same. And let's actually make sure that symmetry is turned on. There we go, beautiful. There we go, there we go, there we go. You can also too, if you wanted to, you can turn active symmetry on like the X and the Y here. So then you can make sure that you're doing, you're doing rebuilding on X and Z, sorry, X and Z. So now this is, this is a lot nicer of a cube. And then if I want, I can actually come through here. Now check this out, so I can go Crease my poly groups, right? But now on my crease level is size 15. I can drop this down to something more like two or three. So now when I subdivide up a little bit, once I get past a certain subdivision, it actually does a nice smoothing of that edge. So I can actually say, let's actually only crease the first subdivision. or the, yeah, And then after that, it's now gonna give me a nice fall off. So now I have this cube here. And then of course two, we could be wicked. We could pick this one here. So I'm actually gonna just go ahead and hide this guy. Let's actually turn this, let's turn this color blue. So the color, pick this one, hide this one. Here, let's actually do this. Let's go polygroups. Auto groups, so I can hide 
hide that one and I can make all of these red color there we go and we have we have the die and then of course at this point we don't need it that high of a subdivision level so we can actually go ahead and delete one of these really higher there we go awesome and now we have that die so let's come back here let's turn everything else on turn solo off we don't need that guy back on perfect all right cool so we actually have now successfully done here i got this pouch here let me just delete that pouch we don't need that one yay all right great now we have the die and if we want to i'm just going to go ahead and control d duplicate that one and now we have we have dice and we could play with this dice another time and let's actually just do this real fast let's pick this i'm going to pick a darker base color so i'm going to go color fill that in i'm going to grab the color on his belly here and get that sand and we'll just end up refining that later there we go all right everybody so that's going to go ahead and let me just hit save real fast that's gonna be my time no 24 hour skull marathon oh man do you i don't know if some of you do remember but i actually did a crazy marathon uh, a couple years ago might actually plan on doing that again on my personal channel that might be something we could play with anyway <laughs> i'm glad everybody enjoyed the stream uh how to color objects in zbrush really quickly it's it's fun and effective what you need to do is have a base color first so if you insert something like let's say this cube real fast any color you pick here is just going to adopt that color all right it's so green whatever what you need to do first is come up here to color and fill that object and at here at the very top you have a mrgb for material in rgb rgb and then m for so what you could do is just click rgb and then you can actually come on and you can fill that object with white. Now when I pick another color, notice it's not picking that color. But now I can pick like, let's say the paintbrush. And I can start filling that in if I wanted to. What you saw me do as I sped through that real fast was that um, these have poly groups. So I was able to, to isolate one of the poly groups by control shift tapping. Control shift and clicking one of the poly groups. And I filled that with a color first. And then that ignored the rest of that. So that's how I ended up kind of breezing through that very, very quickly to make the dice. And now here we are. So that's that's how that ended up happening. And I go ahead and delete that guy. All right, everybody. That is it. Again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I do this for the most part every Wednesday. Um, I know I was gone for a couple weeks, but this if you're here in the Los Angeles area, Monster Palooza is this weekend. That's where I'm going to be, along with the ZBrush team. So please come hang out with us. Uh, booth 340, I believe. But you can find us. We'll be pretty loud and obnoxious, like always. And then, of course, too, um, yeah, I'll be streaming next Wednesday as well. Anyway, that is it. Have a great one. Oh, actually, the other thing. If you guys are interested in ZBrush to Substance Painter workflows, you guys are going to want to check out... If you go to maxon.net and i'll share the link right now but under our um events we actually have so i come up here to events coming on down we have a demystifying so we're doing hard surface techniques with zbrush and substance and we're going in and we're actually working with the adobe substance painter team so if this is something that is interesting for you guys and interested in that workflow Come check us out because I'm going to be there with the Substance team. They're going to be talking about their techniques, their workflows, and how they utilize the two tools. So come and check it out. You're going to not want to miss that. Yeah. No, you didn't miss it. You didn't miss it. Carbon, that happens Monday, this coming Monday. Shared the link. And it's a four-part series. So... Yes, uh, if you want to pick, yeah, the character for color picking is just C on the keyboard. Hover over that color, and you'll get that color. That is correct. Oh, yeah, you did miss the stream. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> you did. Sorry, man. I'm out of here. All right, guys, I'll catch you later. 
Bye for now, but not forever.